Hey everybody, welcome to the Toy Box. I'm your host, Andrew M. Today we're going to be doing a figure spotlight on Clutch from G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero. This particular Clutch is version 3 of the figure, released in 1992 as part of the Mega Marines sub-team. Uh, Clutch as a character is often depicted as the Grease Monkey of the team. He is a vehicle driver. That's uh, his primary duty. So if it's got wheels, he can drive it. APCs, Jeeps, you name it. Uh, he's not a heavy equipment operator, uh, but he is very much uh, a guy in tune with how to make wheeled vehicles maneuver and how to repair them, how to utilize them. Uh, he is kind of a dirty character in that he's described in his bio uh, as being someone who, you know, slicks his hair back with uh, motor oil and almost never shaves, and uh, he's kind of a, a, a dirty, grimy guy. So this version of the character is different in that he's clean-shaven. Um, also different with him, I'm sure that you're noticing by now, is that he's bright neon orange, primarily. And we're going to get into the reasoning for that in a moment. Um, with the G.I. Joe Real American Hero line, which uh, is sort of my de facto line when it comes to toy collecting, I own a complete set of figures from 1982 through to 2008, and many others from uh, later years beyond that. Um, the... Uh, the versions of the characters um, are simply numbered uh, because there really isn't a, a great way to differentiate them. Um, it's not like you have with with uh, Batman where you've got, you know, your sort of Christopher Nolan Dark Knight look for Batman, your animated series look for Batman, etc., etc. There's no real names to differentiate many of these. So even though this clutch is considered to be Mega Marines clutch, which makes him different, because he's unique in that respect. Um, I'm just always going to default back to the numbering scheme for G.I. Joe figures when it comes to their uh, repeated versions, because there's a lot of them where, without the number, you just can't tell the difference. They're released in the same year. Um, there's a lot of different uh, considerations. Um, but whether you prefer to think of him as Mega Marine Clutch or version 3, here he is. So the Mega Marines were something that Hasbro did with the G.I. Joe line uh, in the early 90s, uh, in the waning years of the line, every wave was basically part of a specialty sub-team. They had a ninja team, they had a drug enforcement team, they had, you know, um, environmental protection team, they had all kinds of different things. The Mega Marines were intended to be an elite squad, or a specialty squad, I'm sorry, from the G.I. Joe team, uh, that was made to hunt down these monstrous biological and cybernetic creations of Cobra. So Clutch is a member of that. I picked my Clutch up uh, from an online seller in around 2003. Uh, he came as you see him. He didn't have any weapons or anything, but he is in flawless shape. There is one tiny paint scratch on the back of his head, and I can't even tell you if that was developed over his years of being transported across the country or whether he came like that. This is honestly not a figure I've paid a great deal of attention to over the years. But one thing I try and do with these spotlights is spend some time with the figure. I actually keep them on the desk uh, during the intervening days between videos and really think about, you know, what do I want to say about them and why do I like them, why do I have them? And with this figure, the first thing that popped out at me was uh, that this figure's mold, his sculpt, is terrific. It is fantastic. It encapsulates exactly what I like about G.I. Joe. It's got that, that sense of military mixed in with just enough sci-fi futuristic stuff to make it feel like I know it doesn't really exist, but maybe in some kind of comic book universe, this would make a heck of a lot of sense and he'd be a very grounded character. Now, obviously, this figure uh, has a challenge in that his colors are not true to life. They're not realistic. You would never see a military operative dressed in something like this. In fact, if you go hunting in the backwoods of New Brunswick, you'd never see someone dressed in colors this bright. This is blindingly bright. Uh, but I'm going to go through right now and, and talk about why this character actually, and this figure in general, I think, gets a bad rap. So with Clutch being the uh, grease monkey, you know, uh, engineering-minded guy that he is, 
His uniform is actually quite functional, despite the fact that the, the, the color scheme is what it is, which I know is a sore point for a lot of G.I. Joe fans. Running down the figure articulation, it is very standard for a G.I. Joe, but since this is the first one I've done on my channel, we're going to go through it point by point. So, like all G.I. Joes from 1985 and after for standard, his head is on kind of a ball, which allows it to go, you know, look up and down, as well as go side to side. The originals could only go side to side. The, arm, the shoulders are on a ball joint, allows them to go out to the side like that. He's got a bend at the elbow, as well as at the bicep, so he can move his arms up and down, out to the side. The upper and lower portions of the figure are attached by an elastic, so you can get good range of motion out of the torso. That elastic, of course, also holds the legs in place. You can get them perfect sitting poses because these figures are made to go in vehicles, especially Clutch here. That's, that's his raison d'etre. Um, legs can go out from side to side a bit. The mold doesn't hinder that very much on this figure. That does differ from figure to figure. And, of course, he's got bends at both knees. And my Clutch has some nice tight joints. Nothing is loose. He's not flapping around in the wind. In terms of the paint application, the application is outstanding. The nice, nice, good, crisp lines. You can really tell a differentiation. Um, there's no spillage. Uh, one thing I really like about these Mega Marine figures, it, it's neat, is that they get these marbleized uh, plastic on the lower torso, on the crotch piece, and on the legs. That's really kind of a neat design. I actually really like that. It's very eye-popping without being uh, obnoxious, and it's... It's consistent. There's only a couple of different tones of green. It's it's not uh, it's not you know too much of an eyesore. Now the paint choices themselves, I don't care for. Um, I'm not a fan of the giant bright hunter orange and yellow. Um, I am aware there's a variation with this figure where some of the figures in, with the arms, uh, it's yellow plastic with orange paint, and some of it is orange paint with yellow plastic. Mine uh, looks to be the orange plastic with yellow paint based on um, right back here you can see some small tiny indications of paint wear around the edges of the yellow uh, I don't even know if that's going to show up on camera but I can see it looking at it and I believe that's the version that I have neither one is considerably more rare or sought after than the other but um, it's a difference that's been noted by many G.I. Joe collectors over the years for this figure, so I'll, I'll bother to mention it. Um, also, the Mega Marines, for some reason, they were numbered right on the figure itself, and Clutch is number three. I don't know why the number is cast in a, a different plastic and on his leg. He's got the same thing on, his, on the top of his cap. It's etched in there, but it's not colored in. It's, it's actually a bit difficult to see, even in person. But one thing I will say is that the mold for this figure, uh, the actual shaping of it, is terrific. Um, he's got some great details, some, some built-in electronic gadgets and whatnot. He's got a sculpted-on gun, which I wish was a removable piece in future. Of course, they, they become that. Um, he's got the, uh, the shoulder straps and whatnot that carry little pouches and grenades, but he's not your typical 90s overdone million pounds of shoulder pads, 14 zillion pouches for no specific purpose. He's actually pretty streamlined, uh, and, and, and it seems like everything on his uniform is purposeful. The armor is in logical locations. It doesn't hinder any movement. Um, I get why he's got the sort of uh, ball cap instead of a, a full-on helmet, uh, you know, he needs to be able to, to see, and you're either going to have a full heads-up display-capable helmet that covers his entire face, or you're going to leave him open to the air. And Clutch is an old-school, you know, really old mechanically-minded kind of guy, so I can see him going with the whole, I'm just going to stick this on my head, put a, an earpiece in so I can talk to the rest of the team, and that's good enough for me. Uh, the figure originally came with a full slate of weapons. Unfortunately, I do not own any of those, but the exact same weapons were included with a lot of other figures uh, in the early 90s. Uh, G.I. Joe figures didn't come with as many unique weapons, if at all. Uh, they came with so these sort of generic plastic weapons trees, and you'd break the, the guns and the missiles and the knives and whatnot out. He did include a spring-loaded missile launcher, which was uh, a hallmark of the early 90s. And as part of the Mega Marine subset, he actually included a can of Play-Doh and a mold. And I'm not making this up. 
Uh, hopefully in a future video we'll get to see one of those figures, which I actually do have. Uh, so the missiles that would fire out of the spring-loaded launcher, there was a mold that came with them, and you could put some Play-Doh in there and stick the missile in and create like a customized, uh, almost like a biological chemical weapon warhead that was meant to uh, be harmful only to these creatures that the Mega Marine subset were meant to fight. And also, you could actually put the figure in the mold just like this, and it would create like a, like a Play-Doh armor that was meant to be this advanced, you know, uh, damage-resistant armor. But of course, when you did that, you could basically only have a figure like this. He could barely move his arms, and it would just wreck the Play-Doh, and it would come off, and... It was just, a, I guess, a way for Hasbro to promote the fact that they're also the owners of, of Play-Doh in addition to G.I. Joe. But this figure, I think, gets a bad rap based on his color scheme alone. I don't deny that I do not like the color scheme. It is something about this uh, figure I, I genuinely have a, a problem with. But what I love is all of the detail that's on him and everything else. Other figures from this subset that suffer from the same color problem were released later on, repainted in sensible... Uh, more down-to-earth paint schemes, and they look fantastic. They just look like futuristic soldiers without being uh, absurdly too bright. And I, I wish that this figure had received that treatment, but he is unique in that none of his parts are ever reused anywhere down the line. Um, and because the era of these style of G.I. Joes has long since passed, uh, we're never going to get to see that, which is unfortunate. I think this is a figure who could have been redone in different colors and could possibly have become a fan favorite. The other thing I'll note very quickly is that I don't think this was originally meant to be Clutch. The character of Clutch has been redone many times in the line and he's always had the scraggly beard and uh, all the rest of it. I think that this was a case where Hasbro needed to renew the trademark, which is something that they're famous for doing. Because um, just like how movie rights will revert back to an original owner for comic book properties, we've seen that happen with Marvel. Uh, you have to keep the action figure rights renewed. And of course, if you're going to do that, you want to make money off of renewing it by releasing a figure with that name. Um, Hasbro has lost the rights from everybody over the year from, er, over the years, I'm sorry, from uh, Soundwave to the Baroness to some other notable characters from many of their properties, Transformers, G.I. Joe, etc. And I think they released this clutch as a way to keep the clutch trademark new uh, for another 10 years because he was released on the 10-year anniversary of the original figure. So that's all we got to talk about for Clutch today, but being a G.I. Joe, and me being an enormous G.I. Joe fan and nerd, I had a lot to say. As always, I welcome input from those of you out there in Toyland about uh, your thoughts on Clutch, G.I. Joe in general, neon figures. Um, do you know anybody who has this, had it? There's something you'd like me to talk about in regards to this figure, others, or ones related to it. Would you like to see one of those big-ass monsters? Because I've got both of them, and they are neat. For now, I will leave you with just my standard please like, share, and subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you out there in Toyland.